This is a phenomenal story about how somebody had their phone stolen and then went on to recover it from the thieves. Now, I have to say at the outset that I absolutely do not recommend that you do this and you take the law into your own hands going looking for your stolen equipment. But if you do ignore my advice and you do go, then I would suggest that you at least take several people with you, but you can't take weapons with you. I'll come back to that more later in the video. In this situation, however, the person did. Because if you remember my video from yesterday, the evidence was provided to the police of the theft taking place, CCTV footage, I'll show you that in a few moments, and the person provided the pinpointed location of the phone to the police, but the police did nothing about it. So this person decided to go along with others and retrieve their phone. So welcome back, but if you're new to me, I'm a barrister who helps you understand law. And if you want lots more exclusive content, please check out Black Belt Barrister, linked in the description below, and use coupon Black Belt Support if you want to discount everything to $9.99 per month to get access to every bit of material on there. So the story in full is this, and it's quite remarkable. The person in question was going to the cafe with their family, and the thief was actually being quite helpful to the family, which you'll see in the clip in a moment. They entered the cafe one by one with luggage and the thief followed them in. In a snap, the phone was taken and the thief was even trying to be helpful and then just left the cafe immediately with the phone. After which, of course, the victim obtained the CCTV footage from the cafe, which showed plainly and clearly that the person had stolen the phone from them. More than this, they had a pinpointed location through tracking on their phone, so they knew exactly where this phone was. The phone was first taken back to a house and all of this information, along with the evidence, was given to the police, but the police decided they weren't going to do anything, stating that they couldn't obtain a search warrant for the premises, which in my respectful view is simply wrong. Now, I did a poll about this yesterday, which 10,000 of you voted on, so thank you very much for that, and 89% of you said yes, the police should be applying to search the premises where the stolen item had been tracked to. Now the police can obtain a search warrant from the magistrates fairly easily. All they have to show is that there's evidence that there's a crime being committed, which there was because there's CCTV footage of the incident happening. And secondly, if they do search the premises, they are likely to find some kind of evidence or stolen equipment or something that is connected to the offence. Both of which are the case here because the phone, as I said, was tracked to this location. But nonetheless, the police refuse to do anything about it. One of the arguments, of course, is that the police simply don't have the manpower to deal with the significant number of phone thefts and other robberies that occur, especially around London. However, I respectfully suggest that this is a reason to increase the resources to the police rather than just settle for less as a society. How can it possibly be that as a society, we just accept that, OK, something gets stolen, the police are too busy, they can't go and check the premises, even though it is tracked to that specific location. Now, remember, Remember from my video yesterday, it's not just phones that are being stolen, it's cars that are being stolen that are also tracked to that location. Fairly expensive cars, and they are tracked to a specific location. The police do turn up sometimes and simply say, well, it's possibly in one of these garages, so there's no way we're going to find it, and we're not going to go door to door, and we're not going to apply for a search warrant, so the item remains stolen. There is much more to this story, including how this phone was recovered. But before that, let's watch the clip. I will play it first without any captions to see if you can spot the precise moment the theft takes place. I will then play it again with an overlay so that it will point it out just in case you miss it. Watch this. So with the basic outline of the story, you may have spotted that theft take place. Did you notice how quick it was? Did you notice that the thief was even being kind and engaging with the victim and family? Because most of you would expect that the thief is probably trying to hide and not speak to anybody, but this is not necessarily the case. This is why it's so deceptive. Thieves will often engage with you and talk to you because you are much less likely to suspect somebody that's being kind to you. Let's say they hold a door open for you. You are probably less likely to suspect 
suspect somebody that holds the door open for you or that is engaged with you in some other kind of way, such as to speak to you or ask you the location of something. But all these are distraction techniques. As I've said in previous videos, when somebody says, do you have the time? It's a distraction technique because it takes your eyes and your focus off the person in front of you, off anything around you, and somebody might be coming up beside you, around you, slipping their hand into the pocket as was the case in this clip. So if you didn't spot the theft, the phone was in the victim's right hand pocket. We'll watch the clip again, and I'll put some overlays on it, which will pinpoint the location of the phone and the thief so that you can see exactly what happens. Watch this again. Now hopefully you could see just how quick that happened, just in a snap. She was in the shop, taking the phone, a little bit of exchange to distract from the fact that she was actually a thief and out she went. No suspicions raised whatsoever. In fact, she probably came across as being kind and genuine, possibly asking where to go or something like that. Now, something fairly similar has happened to me. It was an aborted attempt at stealing a phone or something from my pocket, and I actually felt a tug of my pocket at the right-hand side. Now, what I did, because I sensed this coming, is I reversed my elbow, because obviously with my instincts as a martial artist, I reacted fairly quickly. I just shoved my elbow back to push the person away, and I felt it connect. And I turned around and there was a look of guilt on this man's face as he suddenly scurried away. Now it was quite clear that he was trying to take my phone because I felt him pull the side of my pocket. Now just touching on the self-defense aspects, you can use reasonable force if it is deemed to be necessary in circumstances that you genuinely believe them to be. This is in self-defense of yourself, of another, or indeed of property. The requirement is that it must be reasonable force. Now, of course, if you were to attack somebody, take them to the ground and beat them repeatedly, that is certainly not reasonable force. But to shove somebody out of the way, as I did, would be deemed reasonable force in my view. So back to the story. The victim in this story had the phone stolen, as you noticed here. It was a little while before they noticed it was missing and then obviously obtained the CCTV from the cafe because it was quite clear that it was taken in the cafe, presumably because they'd used the phone immediately before entering the cafe. So they got the CCTV footage from the cafe. It clearly showed the theft taking place and they could track the location of the phone using another device. All of my Mac devices will track where all of my other devices are, even my watch, as many of you probably well know. All of this was then provided to the police, but the police, as I said, just didn't want to visit the property. They didn't want to take it up. And this is what led to the victim contacting me and giving me permission to use this footage to show you just to raise awareness of just how quickly and easily this can happen. Now, aside from the police not wanting to deal with this, which frankly frustrates me and obviously frustrates the victim and clearly frustrates the majority of 10,000 of you that voted on this poll, this person decided to go and get back their phone. Now, as I said earlier, I don't recommend that you take the law into your own hands and you go looking for your phone and demanding it back. But that's exactly what happened in this case. The victim didn't go alone, several people went, and they knocked on the first door that the pinpointed location went to. But before we get to that, there is one little interesting bit that happened just before the arrival at this house. The phone was tracked from that house going to another location, to a phone store. So the thief was taking the phone to a phone store to try to sell this phone. Clearly, it was an unsuccessful sale, so they returned back to the house. The phone returned back to the house. So when the victim went with others, as I said, to the house, initially, when the door was answered, the victim and associates said that the stolen phone had been tracked to that address. The people at the address immediately said, why would we be stealing your phone? We don't know who you are. 
However, at this point, you might glean that it hadn't been said that they had stolen the phone. They hadn't yet been accused of stealing the phone. Only the fact that the phone had been tracked to that address. However, the victim and associate said, well, we don't care because the phone has been tracked to this address. We have called the police and the police are on their way. They know where we are, they know it's here and the police are on their way. At which point the people at the house said, is it this kind of phone? At which point, obviously, they said, yes, that is the kind of phone that it is. And presumably out of fear that the police were going to arrive, the people at the house produced this phone from a bag to say, is it this one? And the victim said, yes, that's my phone, and then left with their phone, recovering their phone from the thief at the tracked location. In fact, it gets even worse than this, and this is one bit that I find particularly distasteful. The victim and associates actually went to this premises at midnight and told the police that they were there asking for assistance. The police first told the victim that they have no power to obtain a search warrant and to wait for the patrol. However, in the meantime, they are free to bang on the door themselves. Only no patrol car turned up and no feedback was given to the victim until the following morning, after which, of course, the victim had already retrieved the phone. Now, I would like your thoughts and comments in the box below because I absolutely, fundamentally cannot accept that this is the level that we must stoop to as a society to take the law into our own hands, putting ourselves in danger and at risk to go and retrieve our own property from the thief at a location because the police simply won't do it. I accept that there is an argument that the police services are underfunded, understaffed, and simply don't have the time to deal with it. However, there are a great number of stories, as you well know, in the press where police have dealt with things that a lot of people think the police shouldn't be spending time on. This, I suggest, is not one of those. I suggest that in a case like this, a phone theft, which is a specific type of robbery which attracts a more severe penalty because the theft of a mobile phone is a specified type of robbery. In fact, the new sentencing policy for mobile phone theft saw a first-time robber jailed for four years in 2002, with the then Lord Chief Justice saying that this is a warning to phone thieves that they can expect to be jailed, unless there were absolutely exceptional circumstances. And again, in 2015, the Sentencing Council emphasised that regardless of the monetary value of the item, the value of the information stored on it, such as photographs, represents a substantial loss to the victim. So as I said, and just to emphasise the point, the sentencing guidelines are strict on mobile phone thefts and they should be stamped out. But going alongside with that should be an effort by the police. Because, as I said, this phone was tracked directly to that location. The victim knew where it was, therefore the police knew where it was, and the police had evidence that it had been stolen. They could have, relatively easily in my view, obtained a search warrant for that address because there was evidence that the crime had taken place with the CTV footage, and there was enough information that they would find the stolen item at that address which was borne out to be the case because the victim went to that address with associates, recognised the thief who had a bag full of stolen phones and retrieved it. I simply cannot accept that this should be the new norm. If police need more funding to investigate these things, then that's exactly what must happen. The government must choose where to spend its funding wisely, I accept, but at least enough of that should be going to support the police services to investigate crime. After all, the police have a common law duty to investigate crime and they have statutory powers with which to do so. So I'm sorry if this comes across as being on a bit of a high horse, but this is obviously a fairly strong view, not just of me, but of many people, because if there's evidence that there's something happened and the police can find it and go and do something about it, then they absolutely should. In that particular case, if the police did go to that address, they would most likely have found half a dozen or a dozen or a few dozen different phones that they could return to the victims. The police services are usually focused around what they call detection, which is detection of a crime. Not just recording it, which is a report and a complaint that it's happened, where someone rings up and says, my phone's been stolen, obviously on a different phone because the phone's been stolen, but the detection is where the police actually find who's stolen the phone. If the police did get the search warrant and go to that address fairly promptish, then they would have gone there and who knows how many phones and how many victims they would have been able to get the phones back from. 
I certainly hope that now they take it seriously. I hope that newspapers pick up this story, this video, my explanation of it. And frankly, I hope that this video goes viral, not just because it will help my channel and I want my channel to grow, of course I do, but I want the story to go viral because I want people to take this seriously. Police had clear evidence that it had taken place and clear evidence as to where the stolen item was located. So as I said, let me know your thoughts and comments in the box below. Don't forget the discount code Black Belt Support if you want to discount my exclusive content on blackbeltbarrister.com where I will answer your questions with video responses. And please remember to like this video and subscribe and I'll see you next time.